Um, it's 7 o'clock on the 10th of August, and it is a meeting of the Epping Forest District Council Planning East Committee. My name is Ian Hadley, I'm the chairman for this evening, and before we start properly, I'd like to read this for the benefit of anybody in the chamber, uh, members of the public. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or another use by such third parties. If you are seated in the lower public seating area, it is likely that the recording cameras will capture your image and this will result in the possibility that your image will become part of the broadcast. This may infringe your human and data protection rights and if you wish to avoid this, you should move to the upper public gallery. Thank you. Well, once again, good evening, members. Good evening, members of the public and speakers and anybody watching this on the webcast. Um, tonight, I have Councillor Heather Brady as my Vice Chairman, and Adrian Hendry from Democratic Services, Graham Courtney from uh, Planning Officer, and Andrew Prince from uh, Planning Officer, and Amy working the media buttons. Thank you. So, we start with... Okay, item two, advice to the public and speakers. Has that been passed? Yes. It has. Right, item three, apologies for absence. Yes, Chairman, we have apologies from Councillors Bolton, Chris White, White Whitbread, Holly Whitbread, and Janet Whitehouse. Okay, item four, declarations of interest, anybody? Do we have, okay. Councillors Thorpe, of course. Uh, thank you, Chairman. As when this was last heard before, as item number 11, I've got a non-pecuniary interest and I propose to uh, leave the chamber. Thank you. Okay. Amos. Councillor Amos. Chairman, uh, I have a similar declaration on item number 11. I uh, will leave the chamber. Okay. Councillor Amos. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, likewise, as the two previous councillors, I have personal non-pecuniary interest in this matter, I know the applicant and other parties to this, so I will leave the chamber and I will not be voting. Thank you. Thank you. And I should have mentioned earlier that items 10 and 12 have been withdrawn, uh, withdrawn because of the, the Parish Council objection has been withdrawn, and both items have been approved under delegated authority already. Thank you. Well, the minutes, minutes of the last meeting. Do we have any comments? Um, well, my, my comment on page 17. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry. Um, my comment on page 17, section 26. I think a word's been missed out there, which I've just quoted. So it does say here, the public open space area to the northern end of the site shall be retained in perpetuity for general public use and shall be enclosed nor access restricted. So I think they've missed out a not between the shall and the bee. Mm. Okay. <coughs> okay, item six, any other business? No other business. No other business, thank you. Item seven, uh, District Council planning policy briefing note. Are we all up to date on that? Agreed, thank you. Item 8, site visits. And I assume no site visits. Okay, thank you. Right, we go on to item 9, which is planning application EPF 0016-19, which is the Gypsy Mead site in Firefield. And I think, Graham, you're going to take that one. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. This application proposes a new housing development of 23 units at the former Gypsy Mead worksite in Fifield. It is before committee, as it is a major application, uh, and since there is an objection from the Parish Council and 10 neighbouring residents, the application is recommended for approval, subject to conditions and a legal agreement. 
The site is situated on the western side of Onga Road at its junction with Morton Road. Whilst it includes the field to the north, uh, this is to accommodate sustainable drainage measures. Built development would be restricted to the southern portion of the site, uh, which was formerly used for industrial and commercial purposes. The site uh, does contain a number of TPO trees. The site is allocated for residential purposes uh, in the, um, and is proposed to be removed sorry, from the Greenbelt as part of the emerging local plan. Whilst not yet adopted, there are no modifications proposed for this allocation uh, and no issues or concerns have been raised by the local plan inspector. The site is situated on the edge of the village of Fifield and is adjacent to and opposite several existing uh, residential properties. Immediately adjacent to the site are Mill Hatch, which is a Grade 2 listed building, and uh, Warmonger's Cottage, which is locally listed. The existing access into the site is on Onga Road. Uh, there is a public right-of-way that leads along the western boundary, just here. Uh, this shows the uh, existing road frontage uh, along Onga Road, uh, although it is understood uh, that the hoarding has been painted since this photograph was taken. Uh, this is the road frontage uh, along Morton Road. Uh, we do have several photographs from within the site, but uh, to be perfectly honest, there's very little to see. Uh, most of the previous structures have been removed. Um, I understand this is a photograph uh, towards the field to the north. Uh, this is the adjacent Grade 2 listed building known as Mill Hatch, uh, which is situated on the very corner of the Onga Road and Morton Road junction. This is the adjacent locally listed building known as Warmonger's Cottage and the Longhouse. So as previously stated, the built development would be uh, restricted to the southern portion of the site, which is previously developed land. The northern section of the site is included uh, in order to accommodate an attenuation pond uh, for sustainable drainage purposes, can be seen here. So the proposal would provide 23 houses and 52 parking spaces. This would include nine affordable homes the design and layout of the site has been heavily influenced by the TPO trees, the majority of which would be retained and can be seen here. The proposal was subject to a pre-application discussion, has been presented to the QRP and has been subject to amendment. The scheme here is the result of these discussions. The development would be centred around uh, an area of open space uh, and part of the site uh, would be uh, one way, it's around here. The dwellings are a mix of detached, semi-detached, uh, and one small row of uh, terrace properties, predominantly two storeys, although plots eight, um, where are we? eight, nine, 13, and 16 uh, do incorporate uh, rooms in the roof space. So that's these four here. I'm just going to quickly flick through the different uh, dwellings that are going on there. So this is the small terrace uh, being incorporated, which are two-bed affordable units. Uh, these are the three-bed affordable units situated at plots 17 to 22. Uh, this is house type C, uh, which are three-bed open market houses. Uh, this is house type D, uh, which is uh, a free bed open market house. Uh, these are um, house type E, which are also free bed open market houses. Uh, this is house type F, which is uh, a four slash five bed open market house. Uh, this is house type H. Uh, which are semi-detached properties, uh, both free bed. Uh, this is house type J, uh, which are four bed open market houses. 
So this shows a section of the site, uh, which shows the variety in design and materials, which is considered to uh, reflect and complement the wider area. Uh, here's some views of within the site. Um, so the application has been accompanied by a number of reports regarding drainage, trees and ecology uh, and subject to conditions. It is acceptable with regards to these matters. Uh, due to the scale of the site, uh, a number of requirements and contributions are necessary, including affordable housing provision, uh, SAC mitigation measures, along with contributions towards library improvements and open space. I'm just going to put the site plan back up here. Uh, so the proposal is a well thought out and appropriately designed scheme that has been subject to negotiation and amendments. It's been designed so as to have no detrimental impact on neighbouring residents including the adjacent listed and locally listed buildings. Although at the current time the application constitutes inappropriate development in the Greenbelt, the uncontested allocation and its future release from the Greenbelt, combined with the benefits to housing supply, are sufficient very special circumstances to outweigh this harm. The proposal includes two parking spaces per unit, plus six additional visitor spaces, and the dwellings all meet the required internal space standards. It is policy compliant in terms of affordable housing provision and suitably addresses all other matters. As such, the application is recommended for approval, subject to conditions and a legal agreement. Back to you, members. Thank you, Graham. Um, OK, we come across the first public speaker, who is Tim Wadey, who is on video conferencing. Tim? Yeah, Ian, thank you. I'm going to address three key points. One is... Uh, development sympathetic to the village setting, second is parking, and the third is sewage. I quite agree the site needs a, a development from its current eyesore, and we were really pleased to see it improve, included in the structural plan for 14 houses, but the immediate jump for 24 to 25 was a surprise. The density drives concerns, and it's higher than the other recent developments in the parish, so I think it seems out of place. Also, the amount of 2.5 built story buildings on the Morton Road is disappointing, but it's difficult to assess these because the visuals that are provided online don't reflect the current plan. Could we request that the current online data is updated to reflect that, please? The parking provision is woefully underestimated, and whilst it might meet the guidance, uh, it's not adequate for village life, and it's already, there are contentious areas in the village, like Walker Avenue, where the parking just isn't adequate. The infrequent buses to Chelmsford arrive too late to be effective school buses, and there's no school service to, to Epping. Village life is such that each adult has a car, and as soon as our young people reach 17, they drive too. Some properties only have one allocated parking space, and all of the others assume that the garage is used for parking, and, and we know experiences that that isn't the case. Outside the, the allocated parking, the area is extremely tight, and if you parked on the pavement, you would block access, hindering deliveries and waste collection. And there's also pretty much no space on the surrounding roads to support additional parking. We understand the developer, you've explained already, has adjacent land, and feel that conditions should be applied to provide overflow parking in this area, obviously on a permeable base and screened by amenity trees and hedging. Finally, sewage. It already has problems. It's been known to back up in nearby properties, and there have been recent overflows near popular footpaths. We all need a guarantee that this issue will be resolved prior to site occupation. So in summary, the, th the key points are the design, it all seems to be a bit crowded and tight and going for uh, 2.5 storey buildings when there are none around it. Parking provision is woefully inadequate and the developer should be asked to provide a better plan and we know need to know what's going to be done to prevent issues with the sewerage in the future thank you thank you tim um okay the second speaker is parish council and that is councillor barbara saywood three minutes barbara um hello yeah i'm barbara saywood i'm the chair of the Highfield Parish Council. Um, so since we put our objections in, we actually have had some of our concerns already addressed 
I've got four points that I'd like to raise. The first one is the sewage. Um, we feel that the sewage, as Tim said, the infrastructure in the village is actually not fit for purpose currently um, and is unable to deal with the existing houses, let alone, let alone adding another 23. We recently had two sewers that blew and spreading sewage out onto the fields, which meant that a truck had to come and pump all the sewage out and take it up to Willingale, which really is not um, an ideal situation. Um, Mr. Dick confirmed that any work that would be needed to um, you know, support this, um, the report was a bit ambiguous. So it was kind of an, we could do this, or we could do this, and we could do that. However, he said it wasn't like that, but the report is ambiguous, so that needs um, clarification. Um, and also, because this is such a serious issue regarding this sewage, and I don't want to be confrontational, but we want to make it clear and on the record that if there are any issues in the future, we will hold the planning group and Luna Group responsible because we can't afford for that to happen really. Um, parking issues, like Tim said, we haven't got enough parking places there. There are not enough parking places in Walker Avenue, Hoochin Drive, um, that the road is um, used frequently because obviously there's a school at the bottom of Walker Avenue. We've also got the Village Hall, so there's lots of problems with parking already. So another 23 houses that don't have sufficient parking for visitors, etc. where are they going to park? Um, Mr. Dick did allude to the fact that they also own the, the, that 14 acres of land next to the site, and they were willing to make more, some of that available for parking. So we think that should be looked at. Um, the other point, uh, is regarding affordable housing. We understand that legal and general will control um, the aspects of this, but we're very keen to ensure that allocation will be done prioritizing our local residents, and it's not actually transparent in how this is going to be done. Uh, finally, the S106 money. We'd like to reiterate that we want the money to be allocated to projects that will directly benefit Firefield residents as it is them who will be impacted by the new houses. And I've already got a shopping list in place, which our clerk will be forwarding on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, members, um, normally the ward uh, council speaks first. That's yeah, okay. Oh, sorry, cookery. <laughs> sorry about this. <laughs> Easily done. Okay, the next one is the applicant's agent, Michael Dick. Michael, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Michael Dick from Luna Group. Um, tonight is the end of a very long road for everyone involved in the Gypsy Mead project, um, no less for the community. We've worked for four years with the council, and most notably and almost in partnership with the planning officers. Uh, thank you to Ian Ansell and Nigel Richardson and also with housing, drainage and the flood risk officers. Also work with the statutory consultees, the council's quality review panel, and importantly consulted with Fifield Parish Council and the local community. The culmination of everybody's efforts is the proposal before you. It is a model application for rural development. It ticks every single policy box. It is compliant in every sense. Our attention to detail ensures and particularly, a drainage strategy has been agreed with the council officers and Thames Water. There will be no risk of flood for either surface water or sewerage. There's no environmental disturbance. 40% of the housing is allocated to a preferred housing association, a partner of the council. The density of housing is less than 50% of the maximum range of national policy. Local policy, requires between 30 and 50 units per hectare. Ours is 26 units per hectare, less than the minimum. We have a great mix of two, three, four and five bedroom houses, the majority being two and three bedroom. <coughs> Parking is strictly compliant with county policy. 
two spaces per property and visitor parking. We'd be more than happy to allocate overflow parking of the land adjacent, if that's a condition. The landscape and habitat are improved and protected with the existing TPOs forming an integral part of the design. Essex highways have been consulted and their analysis of both pedestrian and vehicular road safety are acceptable. There's good pedestrian links from the village and the adjoining industrial buildings are higher than 2.5 storeys. The site is allocated for residential development of the local plan. It's been previously developed and the design is of very high quality. It meets the needs of the local community and the council. The benefits are numerous. A significant benefit to Epping Forest District Council in terms of housing delivery. An improvement to surface water drainage and sewerage to the village. A marked addition to biodiversity financial contributions to the council and the community, and a final solution to a problem site which was abandoned after a fire some 19 years ago. We've carefully defined our master plan to develop the land in the most efficient manager in the language of Fifield. The architecture is most definitely in keeping with the village and the vernacular of this part of Essex. We've produced a balanced and appropriate scheme and now ask you to play your part and consent us to deliver this project. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Well, <coughs> I'll go back to where I nearly left off. Um, the board councillor normally speaks first. That's me tonight. He won't speak first. He will leave that to somebody else. So who would like to kick, the, kick off? Well, councillor Bolton. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, first thing is, I'm glad to see something happening to that site. You drive past it for the last 19 years and it slowly got worse and worse. Um, I have a personal problem with the car parking issue in that area at the moment. Because of the school and the school run, that area is um, heavily used and it does worry me that there's not enough parking spaces in the new development to cope with visitors and we, you talk about two cars per property or parking spaces per property that um, well we know we've got three and four bedroom houses that most properties today have three or four cars so I do see that as a big problem um, my other serious thoughts is the sewer living in the village um, you do notice that the problems that have happened in the past and quite frequently actually that at least twice a year there is a problem where the sewers burst across the fields. So I think that is a problem that needs to be solved before the houses get there. How is that going to be solved? Uh, I'm really pleased to see affordable housing or as such there because there is a need and it does worry me that younger people haven't got somewhere to start off in the village. So I was wondering if there is something that can be done, as the parish council have suggested, that recommendations from them or whatever can be looked at to keep local people in the area. Going back to my car parking, I wondered if we could put a condition on more car parking spaces. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Philip. Thank you, Chairman, and thank you for the speakers and, and my fellow councillor. A um, couple, of, couple of points, a question at the end, I think. Um, I've heard what's said about car parking, but we are very clear in our local plan that car parking, in the absence of any sp other standard, should correspond to the Essex standard, and that's what it is. I think we would find ourselves on very shaky ground if we have an applicant who is actually meeting the car parking standards. Uh, I'm sure other members in the committee are well aware of the number of times where developers try to go under the car parking standards. So I, I think we should actually welcome the fact that it is actually at that, at that level. Um, I also, we all have to consider the application in front of us, so we can't condition on uh, provision of additional car parking elsewhere, that would be an unreasonable condition to uh, 
imposed, but I'm, I'm pleased to see it's there, and I was pleased to hear from the applicant's agent a willingness to look at that. I think that's something that can be carried on alongside uh, execution of this. I've looked at the sewerage condition, which is condition number seven. I think it's fairly robust for what, what we're trying to do. We have to remember that new development <coughs> cannot be held responsible for existing problems and it's not up to new development to solve existing problems. Uh, we can't put that in. I think the condition seven is good enough to protect uh, the village from that, uh, th those issues. Overall, I think this is a, a reasonable uh, development for, for the site that we've allocated in the local plan. Uh, I think it's correct that it should go forward. I did just have a quick question on the external amenity space uh, for plots 17, 18, and 21, if, if we were happy that those were uh, of an appropriate size and location to meet in with uh, our local plan. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else I can see? Councillor Bethman. I think, I think Jamie's first. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll, I'm live. I'm live, I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, could the officer please pull up the, um, the plan of the site? Uh, my concern is that we have a very similar site uh, at the Gables where we have the racetrack set up. Um, I like the plan, I like the design, I like the style of the housing, but the problem we've got is utility vehicles are unable to get around the roads around the Gables. We've had the house on the corner at the bottom of the Gables hit twice now by, uh, one was a furniture removals lorry, I think we've had the dust cart run over somebody's <laughs> ornaments outside their property because the swing of the dust carts. It may cause us problems in the future going forward, the size of the utility vehicles that we use mm. to collect rubbish. Um, it, it looks nice on the plan. I just want to make sure there's adequate provision to get the vehicles around. I know it's one way. Uh, it looks very tight there around <coughs> the corners. Um, obviously, we're going to have to reverse a dust cart down to 10, 11, 12 at the bottom there. And I think, apart from that, I'm quite happy with the design. If the office is satisfied that we've got adequate provision in there, then uh, I'm, I'm pleased with it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, on that question, Graham, of the access for dust carts, etc., do you uh, have any information on that? Um, I'm, I'm just having a look to see if we've had anything from our waste department. Certainly, uh, highways have raised no issue, uh, and the officer is, uh, the case officer's happy with the, the layout. It's obviously been subject to uh, negotiation. We do usually get comments from waste. I'm just having a little look, see if I can uh, see anything. So I uh, will come back to you if I can find that. But, but certainly, yeah, officers are, are happy that, that that is sufficient to allow for the dust carts. Thank you, Ray. Um, Councillor McIver. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, and Thank you, officers, um, for actually including some really nice visuals because I think often we look at the, um, the site from a like, like that and it's not as easy to see. And I, I'm very quick to, at planning meetings, criticise when I think that rural settings don't have any sympathy from developers. But I, I think I can say this is probably, in my short time on this council, one of the, the best attempts to keep a new development in keeping with a rural setting and being the a county councillor for Firefield um, and seeing some of the new properties that are developed in, in villages like Firefield. I think this is actually, and I'm pleased to say that the council's quality review panel has actually been involved because I honestly feel we should use this as an example of, of how you know rural development can be done. Um, and I think that all parish councils should use this as a bare minimum benchmark to ensure we have quality development. So I just wanted to make a point of saying how I really do feel that this site is really um, appropriate in terms of its appearance. Um, I hear the concerns of the parish council and I was at, attended a recent meeting where they were raised um, and I think that there's clearly a partnership um, that needs to develop after um, uh, this meeting um, to ensure that there is concerns addressed that this meeting can't address. We can only go by what's in the report. Um, and I'm satisfied if officers are satisfied with um, matters such as drainage. Um, I was particularly concerned about flooding. Um, and I'm really pleased to see in the report that there is a flood mitigation strategy, because um, that's a big issue in Firefield. So I was pleased to see that that, that is taken care of. Um, in regards to parking, I, 
I appreciate it's, it's a shame that uh, Councillor Philip um, doesn't think that we can have that as a condition. If it is possible to have it as a condition, then I, I think that would be great. If it's not possible, then I sincerely hope the Parish Council do everything they can to um, promote an option for additional parking in the future. But I do agree with Councillor Philip, having seen developments that come here with ridiculously scarce parking, I think two per property and uh, you know, it, if it's better than the Essex standard, then I don't think that this committee can do anything more other than uh, you know, move on from that point. But I do think it's a really important issue, particularly in villages where you have schools. Um, so um, I have no concerns to raise other than I think it's fantastic that this site, I can't believe it's 19 years. I mean, I wasn't around then, but wow, that's, that's incredible, 19 years, old as my sister, that that has not been, uh, this, this site has been as it is. I think it's a, it's a beautiful village and I think anything done to this site can only be an improvement. But the fact that today we are considering a scheme that actually takes into consideration the rural setting, something that often is missed, I think it's something that our committee should, should note with, with enthusiasm. Um, so I, I sincerely hope that some of the parish council's concerns can be addressed um, in the future and that there is a, hopefully a, a site here that will set a precedent for good positive development in rural parts of Epping Forest. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Sorry, apologies. Um, Apologies. Uh, I, we have a swept path analysis for refuse vehicles for the internal uh, roadway of the site, which uh, does show that it is adequate to uh, to meet those requirements. I can show you if you want it, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Yes. Um, oh, Councillor Bedford again. Bedford again. Sorry. Yeah, th thank you. Um, I did notice in the report there was a comment that Essex County Council are not adopting the roads within this site, uh, which did raise a bit of concern. Is this wondering if this is going to be common practice going forward? Um, because obviously the cost of maintenance of these roads, uh, do we get an assurance on guarantee on the condition of the roads once the roads are in? Um, so thank you. Great, I think you have the answer. Uh, well, I'm not sure I have the answer to that specific question. Um, uh, it, it, is, it is not uncommon for Essex to not adopt uh, roads of, sort of on, on estates of this size. I mean, it's quite a small development. Um, so, yeah, it's certainly uh, not uncommon for it to be unadopted. Obviously, it doesn't stop uh, it being accessible to... I know one of the concerns, uh, I think, from the parish council was that, uh, obviously, the bin lorries wouldn't then be able to go down it, but that's not the case. They can still access private roads... Um, and it would just be down, the maintenance would be down to a maintenance company. Uh, obviously, the, the cost of that would be, uh, uh, would be borne by the, the residents. Uh, obviously, it would be taken into account by the, res, uh, the housing association uh, when they uh, reach an agreement on the, the affordable uh, houses. Uh, I'm not sure we can get any guarantees on that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's obviously in their interest to make sure the road is a good standard. OK, I think... Um just, just come back Sorry, on a, another, another point then, um, looking at the site itself. I remember in a report about the, uh, the impact of light on a site like this in a rural location. So I take it there's no street lamps in here, which might be a reason why Essex County Council are not adopting these roads, because it doesn't meet their standard for street lighting on adopted roads. Definitely. Yours, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's actually, um, I mean, we haven't got any details uh, specifically about the lighting in front of us here. We, we do have uh, two conditions that, that cover lighting um, within the site. Uh, one is uh, part of the hard and soft landscaping condition. That's fairly standard to have uh, lighting be part of that agreement. Uh, but also because of the uh, ecology impacts on bats, we've also got a, a specific condition about uh, agreeing any lighting on the site uh, and any additional lighting they want you to put in has to be agreed beforehand, and that even includes within residential gardens. So we do have control over, over that. Chairman, could I possibly get my question on amenity space for plots 17, 18, and 21 answered? Yeah. Uh, I was just uh, going to try and measure that, um, but obviously I've got other questions. Uh, so if you bear with me, I'm just going to very quickly see if I can take a... A measurement. I'm not sure I'll be able to get all of them, but I, was, I have got 21 in front of me, which I think is a pretty good example. So let me just have a quick measurement and see what uh, see what that relates, uh, how that that comes out. So bear with me a second. Yeah. 
Okay, while you're doing that, go ahead. I think Michael Dick had one, raise your hand for a previous point that you could assist with. Uh, Mr Chairman, just for clarification, the roads will be adopted and it's part of the heads of terms with the Legal and General Housing Association that the roads must be adopted. Okay. All right, thank you. We'll come back now or later. Okay, I'll do market now, in which case. Um, yes, one of the amazing things about this is that site, uh, which was formerly the Gypsy Me restaurant, a very well-known restaurant, and then taken over by Hack Empire, the Indian restaurant, has been derelict for 19 years and has been a big eyesore in Firefield. Um, which is a great shame, because if you drive to Firefield, you think it's a lovely village, then you see this uh, old metal frames they used to be... Uh, you can see through the trees, see the burnt down building. Not appropriate at all. And some years ago, this very council turned down an application for 19 houses on that site. And that was probably right at the time, uh, for whatever reason. I wasn't here. I don't know. But now this is a different situation. We've got the local plan bearing down upon us, and our emerging local plan, which selected this site. It wasn't the first site. The first site actually had... Uh, uh, indicated 90-odd houses on the site in a field opposite here, uh, which would probably ended up being 120, 130. And then that was dropped for some reason, and I don't know why that was, but it went to the Gypsy Mead site, which is an ideal place to build houses, uh, and not to waste, as it is at the moment, with a semi-brown field situation. Um, on the objections, well, I mean, drainage is a big one, but we do have a condition that says... Nothing will start until the drainage issues have been solved. Um, parking, Councillor Philip mentioned about this is uh, exactly to order about what is expected from such a site, better than normal from the beginning. Overall, I'm perfectly happy with the officer's recommendation. I think it's the right one. And I really think this is the time for this to happen. It's gone on far too long um, in this way where there's no decisions being made. Uh, possibly um, if there is an offer for extra parking off, off the back without being enforced, that could be useful, of course. Um, but otherwise, I fully support this, and I hope that other members see fit to do that. Could I just ask Mr Courtney a couple of questions? Yes, certainly. Uh, and he's, if he's finished on the gardens, have you, do you want to talk about uh, the gardens first? And then I'll ask you. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, I was. I, I'm not. I'm not been able to get accurate measurements. It looks like they're 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 sort of between 40 and 50 square meters. Um, so just slightly undersized. Uh, I mean, obviously they are the affordable housing, which I know is not necessarily a, um, a reason to undersize gardens. But I think in the sort of larger, the, the, the sort of wider context of the larger scheme, we certainly consider those to be acceptable. Um, yeah, just I, I was just going to. Um, just to ask you a couple of the things that the um, parish council had requested. What what would the situation be that there'd be a priority for affordable housing for local residents? Is there anything on that front? Is one and, and the second question would be about using any of the money locally for Firefield. Do you actually would would any of that be earmarked? Uh, well, the, I, I'll deal with the second question first. The, um, obviously, the contributions uh, are as laid out in the report. Uh, I think there's contributions for the library uh, and for open space. Obviously, it would be open space within the local area. That's not necessarily uh, here, so that would obviously be sort of a wider area of Firefield. Obviously, any, any contributions do have to meet with the SIL regulations um, and would, you know, we would be looking at complying with the uh, infrastructure delivery plan uh, we, we can't really ask for over and above that. Um, but as I say, the, you know, the, this is obviously the library and the open space would be sort of for the, far, the, the wider area. Um, <coughs> and then in terms of um, the... So it's about the parking, wasn't it, you're asking? Prioritising. Prior oh, no, prioritising, sorry, yes, prioritising. <laughs> I mean, it's not... It is something that we can do. It is something that is done. Uh, certainly on rural exception sites, uh, it can be done. It tends to be a, um, 
uh, a first nomination right, I believe, is for local people within. Uh, it's either done within the sort of the ward boundary or within a, a, a distance. Um, that is something that that can be done. It is it is usually just a, a first nominations. It is a little bit tricky, obviously. What you don't want to do is put restrictions on the housing associations and then essentially scare them off, and then they, and then suddenly you've got nine affordable homes that nobody wants, um, which is actually even even less use uh, to us than, uh, you know, obviously we have a we have a list of of people that that require houses. It is a district wide uh, list, but but they are all on on that list for a reason. Um, Chairman, perhaps I could suggest the same informative as we had uh, at our last meeting on the Stableford Abbott site, which can be found on page 17 of the agenda, which calls out uh, parish homes. I think as, a, as an informative, that's probably a good way forward. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're we're saying that <coughs> we're saying that we can do that in exactly the same yeah, way. I'm just having a look. Page seventeen. Page, Page 17, seventeen. Yeah. Informative. informative. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, we can put a, a similar informative uh, on that. I mean, yeah, that's a good example right there in our agenda. So that could apply to any other application that comes through of a similar nature. Yeah. Okay. Right, anybody else? No. Okay, let's have a look around. Good, okay, I think we've come to the point where uh, we have to vote on this application to grant permission to build on this site. Um, so, those in favour of the officer's recommendation, vote now, please. Unanimous, Jim. Thank you. In which case, the application is granted. Thank you. Okay, next item. The new uh, item 11, 10 being withdrawn, which is the planning application for 21 Woburn Avenue, Baden Boys. Certain members are now leaving um, because they're not partaking in this particular decision. So, I hand over now to... That's the price. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, members, the, the application before you is located at 21 Woburn Avenue in Faden Boys. The proposal is for a five metre deep extension to an existing outbuilding sited within the rear garden of the site. The application is before committed tonight since the parish council and at least one neighbour has objected to the proposal. Uh, this item was deferred from the last uh, area plans east meeting to allow for a site visit to be carried out. Uh, this was undertaken on Saturday the 30th of July of this year and the officer recommendation for this application is to grant permission uh, subject to conditions. So <coughs> on this slide here, excuse me, uh, here is the, the application site which includes a two-storey end of ter terrace dwelling house uh, within a residential urban area of Faden Boys. Uh, the rear, rear garden area of the site is approximately 31 metres long. Uh, and as you can see from the location plan, the neighbouring dwellings have similar length gardens. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, so here you can see a photograph of the rear of the site. So currently you can see the existing outbuilding uh, which is located at the furthermost point of the garden. Uh, from this photograph you can also see uh, outbuildings uh, on either side uh, which fall within the, uh, the gardens of, of each adjoining neighbour um, in a, within a similar position. Uh, the area of the black tarpaulin is the approximate location of the extension to the outbuilding. So this photograph gives an idea of the length of the gardens 
in this within this part of Wyburn Avenue. So as you can see, the outbuilding is cl is clearly a significant distance from the rear elevation of the main house. <coughs> Excuse me. So here you can see the proposed block plan, uh, which shows the the extended outbuilding on the site, or the proposed extended outbuilding on the site. Uh, clearly, given the length of the rear gardens, it would be a significant distance from the rear of neighbouring properties on Roybin Avenue. <coughs> so on this slide, members, you can see the plans and elevations for the proposal. So the extension would measure five metres in depth, which would give it a total of 8.7 metres in depth. It, it would be 4.1 metres in width, 3.2 metres in overall height and 2.47 metres to the eaves. Uh, the building is proposed to be to still be used ancillary to the main dwelling and within this plan it is identified that it can be used as a garden store and a studio uh, however it is the intention for the use, the primary use of the building to facilitate home working in the form of hosting uh, Pilates classes. So currently within the existing building, uh, there are three clients that attend the studio once a week for an hourly session, uh, two at 8.30 a.m. in the morning and one at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, so <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, the so the intention would be that a, a maximum of, of six clients would use a studio uh, per week, um, and it is clear from the emerging local plan and the national policy, planning policy framework um, that it is sought to facilitate and encourage home working where possible. Uh, and six clients per week is not considered significant enough to result in a, a notable change of use to the site. Uh, in order to safeguard the living conditions of neighbours, uh, conditions have been recommended requiring that it shall only be operated by the occupier of number 21 Woburn Avenue and not let out. Uh, the number of clients using, <laughs> using the outbuilding in any one week must not exceed six persons. Uh, time restrictive conditions to ensure sociable hours of use uh, and no amplified music shall be played. Uh, so, uh, in summary, members, therefore, subject to the conditions set out in tonight's agenda, uh, it is recommended that planning permission is granted. Thank you for that. Okay, we have some speakers on this um, item 11. So, the first one is the objector, Mr. James Miller, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. Um, firstly, thanks to uh, the members of this committee uh, who attended the recent site visit. Um, we hope it afforded um, them the opportunity to visualise what we strongly believe will be the severe impact of the proposed extension on neighbours. We believe it would substantially reduce light to our garden room, which is used for remote working, the widely understood meaning of home working. Indeed, the use of our room will be much more frequent than the six hours per week that the applicant says she will devote to seeing her clients in person. The front of the proposed development would be on a line barely 15 metres from the rear doors of our property. This threatens to curtail the enjoyment that our family, including our adopted three-year-old daughter, take from our garden. The proposed structure would protrude further than other outbuildings in Woburn Avenue all of which were granted planning permission on strict condition that they cannot be used for commercial purposes. It would sit only a few centimetres from our boundary fence, making any uh, attempt to screen it impossible and hampering any maintenance. As you know, and as confirmed by the planning officer, the existing structure does not have the required planning permission. Declarations on the initial application for the extension were also false. The proposed outbuilding includes a storage area for a motorcycle, which the applicants say will reduce what one councillor described as the chronic parking problems in Woburn Avenue. Since the meeting in July, however, the applicants have purchased an additional car 
negating that argument. The applicants recently sought a meeting with us to discuss the proposed extension, but it is clear this case has wider ramifications than simply what happens at our home. As Councillor Chris Whitbread observed in July, there is an absence of planning policy for outbuildings used for commercial purposes and a likelihood that more applications similar to this will be made post-pandemic. We support the Parish Council's desire for a formal policy to provide guidance for applications relating to client-facing work taking place in back gardens. We are concerned that such developments will create a climate where neighbours have to police neighbours, hardly a recipe for community cohesion. Such a situation was confirmed in a letter to Dame Eleanor Lang about this application. In it, the council states it is, quote, standard practice to rely on members of the public to report breaches of planning conditions. This is yet another concern over a development that we believe is excessive, unnecessary and damaging to our amenity. We respectfully ask you to consider how you would feel if it was built beside your home. More broadly, we submit that approval for this application would create a worrying precedent that could tie the hands of this committee and others in the future. We strongly urge you to refuse this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, second speaker will be Parish Council, that's Councillor Peter Gooch. Peter, three minutes. <laughs> Evening, Chairman. Evening, <coughs> members. There are two issues here, I think, to, to discuss. The first one, uh, and you've had a site visit, so is a decision as whether you feel the large extension, uh, some 8.7 metres in length, um, is going to seriously impact the amenity of the neighbour. Um, and as a parish council, our view is that it would. Um, it would <coughs> upset their enjoyment of their, their garden, and indeed, as you heard, their their own room at the rear of the garden, which is used as a, um, as a study, I understand. <coughs> a second point, and I think picking up uh, what from previous speakers just said, and again reflecting on Councillor Chris Whitbread's uh, comments at the last meeting, is the lack of a clear policy on this. Now, I've looked at what other uh, authorities do on this, and there is a clear distinction between home working and home-based business. Home-based business, if we look at this particular one, there are members of the public entering that property, receiving a service and paying a fee for it. That is a business, that is not home working. And I think the, the lack of a policy here where we heard the planning officer is all encompassing saying this is home working, we're supporting this. That is not the case. Other authorities have significant policies Home-based working, for example, uh, home-based business, sorry, may well attract business rates. Other authorities have residential zoning areas where they don't allow these businesses in certain areas. There seems to be a big vacuum here in, in this area. And I think this is a very important decision you're making because I think it really does set a precedent, as, we, as we've heard. And because there's such an inconsistency, as we've heard, that we've got a lot of these large buildings in Bowdoin Boys, and in the district, and in fact, are we now, you know, previously, they've all been conditioned that they will not be used for commercial purposes, whereas we have normally hear that this one is being allowed. It's inconsistent. I really honestly think this needs to be refused until we have a clear policy guidance where we can get some consistency of approach across this particular area. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, next speaker is the applicant. Mr. Grant Brown, three minutes, please. Thank you. Um, I would like to respond to some of the points raised in the last meeting, uh, one of which was applying uh, for change of use to business on the planning application. Um, during the last uh, year, we contacted the council several times to ask if we needed to change of use to business. Uh, on every occasion, uh, we were told that it did not need change of use of the building to business due to the fact that there were so few clients and that the studio mainly for personal use, was mainly used for personal use. Um, we apologise if this was incorrect, but we went by the advice given to us at the time. Um, the planning officer came to view the property. I was extremely honest and told him what the purpose of the current building and the extension would be. 
um, and mostly, actually, it would be used for personal use every single day, including the uh, garage storage area. Um, I st um, started building the extension uh, before planning permission had been received. Uh, this is correct. I, I built a base and several piers, as many of you saw on the site visit. Uh, this was done because we thought we were building an extension under permitted development. As the builder who built the existing studio told Belinda um, that it was not needed, need planning permission, would not need planning permission. Um, even when she asked during construction, uh, he said that he didn't need planning permission. We therefore thought the extension would not need planning permission either. Um, then I looked into this further and very quickly realised that the builder had misled Belinda on the original build. So we stopped all work on the studio and proceeded with full planning permission. Um, again, we apologise for this error. Belinda had no reason not to trust the builder, um, what he told her uh, at the time, especially since he came highly recommended by a family member. Um, third uh, point, uh, there was also talk of um, regulating the hours of operation. Now, we fully understand um, why you might think this is needed, and, and I somewhat agree. But we would be grateful if you could consider the fact that most people only attend Pilates or fitness classes before or after a working day or in their leisure time. Uh, Belinda currently has a client who would not be able to, or two clients that would currently not be able to attend in the hours suggested. Um, as one comes at 8 a.m. on a weekday um, and the other is on a Saturday at 9 a.m., both clients are very respectful and quiet on approach to the studio. We've also asked them not to look into the garden at number 23 um, and even raised the height of the fence to number 23 to give the neighbour as much privacy as possible. Um, I currently have two motorbikes on the road, which I don't pay a parking permit for. Um, one will be moved to the front things. garden and one will go into the studio. Okay, thank so, you. That's right. Okay, members. First speaker, please. Jim, Councillor McIver. Thank you, Chairman. And I regret I wasn't able to attend the site visit, but I, um, I think some of the visuals that we've had, I, I feel I'm able to, to summarise, and I think I'll probably will hit now on the head and I think this is a very balanced situation. It's in my opinion balanced for a number of reasons. First of all, the lack of guidance we have as councillors on making this decision. I absolutely acknowledge that we can only go by the policies the council currently has. And um, that may be frustrating, but of course both uh, the applicant and objectors are in a process whereby those are the policies and we have to, to consider that. But um, let's not start a debate tonight on whether we should develop those policies, but I think it's quite unanimous probably <laughs> that we should look at this because particularly since COVID now, I think we are going to see a lot of home-based businesses. And I think, you know, the point about home-based business and home-based working is also a very grey area. A home-based business could be someone that drills all day for a living. It could be someone that types all day for a living. Um, home-based working, the same. Um, j just because of financial transactions, you could have someone that has a hobby making aircraft models, and then you could have someone that then starts to put them on eBay. Does that then go from being a hobby to a home-based business? This is a grey area, um, and I don't have the answer, and I don't think anyone on this committee will have an answer. But looking at what is in front of me, I would not want to set a precedent that this council doesn't encourage people to use their properties to work from home generate an income, but we also wouldn't want to encourage um, situations where people are encouraged to create inappropriate developments in their garden. I don't feel this is inappropriate for the following reasons. The first reason is I don't feel that this, there is already a structure there, and it's unfortunate that there wasn't planning, but I take into account that the applicant is here today. So I see that there is process being followed. Uh, I don't think that people necessarily visit gardens and have a desire to look in neighbours' gardens. I appreciate it can happen, but I don't think people actively go, go into people's gardens to look at other neighbours. I appreciate why there might be anxiety. Um, 
I also take into account the parking concerns. But then again, I am a realist, and if there isn't space to park, then people won't park there, and they'll have to park somewhere else. That leaves a problem, perhaps, for another street. But looking at the application as it is, I can't see a, a planning reason at the moment, based on the policies this council currently has, as to why I would have to object to this. Um, I do think that there could be, hopefully, between neighbours, if the, this was to um, become fruitful for the applicant, um, and I sincerely hope anyone that has a business in Epping Forest makes a success of it, that I hope that neighbours can work with each other to mitigate any concerns, and I really hope that would happen either way. Um, restriction of hours, I haven't, uh, I'll listen to what colleagues think on that, but Chairman, as regards the, the application, I, I find it difficult to find a planning reason as to why we can allow this, and this rightly sets a precedent, um, and I think there's already many examples of home-based businesses across Epping Forest that, that are incumbent, and of course, who's to say that some of these other properties that I can see most of your neighbours have uh, property at the back of the garden and I, I don't think we have any way of knowing whether those are home-based businesses, home-based working. So as someone that believes in equality, I think we have to treat this application as what it is and fairly and I personally can't see a planning reason why um, I'd have to object to this. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Any other speak? Yes, John. Thanks, Chairman. Yep. Um, I mean, I went on the site visit. I mean, I thought it was helpful. These are large, long gardens. Um, you know, I think the most difficult issue is actually the, the size of the outbuilding. But at the end of the day, as I say, it's in a long, large garden, and it is a considerable distance from the back of the uh, the houses in, in Woburn Avenue. Um, so the impact. You know, there is an there is an impact, um, but it's a very limited. Um, impact. Um, I'm a bit puzzled by the suggestion that there's a sort of a complete policy vacuum in terms of working from home. I mean, page 53 sets out what the council's current policy on working from home is, which is policy 12, and basically it says small-scale business activities are acceptable as long as they don't have a, an adverse effect on the character of the area or the amenities of any property. Um, and, you know, it's difficult to think of something more small-scale than you know, six people coming round to do something indoors, you know, more or less noiselessly. Um, so um, I, you know, I, I, I struggle with the idea there is no policy. I think perhaps it was an issue that policy is not carried over into the submission uh, local plan. But on the other hand, I think this pretty much reflects what national planning policy is. Um, I mean, a lot of working from home doesn't need um, uh, planning permission. It does all seem to depend on, on what the impact on the area and the neighbours is. Um, and um, so I, I don't have an issue, and I don't think this does particularly set a precedent in terms of working from home. I think um, you know, plenty of those activities, you know, whether they involve deliveries, whether they involve the occasional visitor, um, or whether they're completely remote, um, I think those are all covered by, by the policy. Um, so yes, on, on, you know, on, on the balance, um, I'm minded to vote in favour. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I did attend the site visit. Well worthwhile because we can see exactly what we were talking about at the uh, at this meeting. Um, I think the actual application will not affect the neighbours as much as they thought. Um, when we were there, we could see which way the sun was coming round. Um, the only thing, that, I mean, there are a good set of conditions. The only thing, one of the conditions, condition five, um, and uh, the applicant has mentioned this, that it's nine till uh, 1,700 hours. I wonder if this could be altered for another hour to 1,800 hours, and also Saturday mornings. I don't know what the planning officer's thoughts of that or whether the committee would agree to that. Thank you. Uh, 
sorry, members. Um, I, I, I believe that we, you know, we can put a condition on that, that changes those those hours. I mean, that's that's something that we can we can look into, and we'd be we'd be happy to, to change those conditions to to reflect uh, your thoughts. Sorry, I'm just having, I'm, just having a quick look. Obviously, members are more than, uh, you know, we, we obviously only put forward recommendations in terms of uh, conditions. Uh, I'm actually just having a look back, and, uh, and interestingly, at the last committee, uh, I think the, uh, the, the suggested opening hours were, 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 were greater than what they are now, uh, and I think it's been changed in this agenda following the, con the discussion and, and the suggestions by members uh, last time round. But uh, absolutely, la last time uh, in, the pr in the previous agenda, we suggested 8.30 until 8pm, Monday to Friday, uh, and 9am to 5pm, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, and no times on bank holidays. Obviously now uh, we're suggesting uh, 9, I think, as I say, on the back of the previous discussion, uh, 9 to 5, a Friday, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, but don't, if officers, uh, if members wish to uh, um, allow for greater opening hours, deal, please put that forward, and we'll <laughs> we'll do whatever it is you you want us to do. Councillor Bethel, thank you, uh, Mr. Courtney. I think I seem to remember the reason that that was brought in was because of the impact on the car parking around that area, particularly around eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, I think that was the reason because that's when a lot of the commuters tend to go, try to park, or I know it's a controlled parking zone, but people still park there, whether they have a voucher from people or not. So I think that was the reason why the initial hours were changed to lessen the impact on the parking. Um, whilst I'm talking, I will say that I thought that the site visit, like others, was very, very useful. Uh, and interestingly, when we were in the rear garden there, it was a particular note that the sun was directly behind this particular premises, and I think it was at half past ten in the morning. Mm -hmm. So by the time the sun goes round in the afternoon, the impact will probably be late afternoon on the neighbour. I'm not quite sure which way it would be going because I'm not a resident of Faden, so I'm not sure where it, the sun sets. But it did look like it would only impact the additional bit of the new extension to the neighbour next door. Uh, we were able to have a good look at the uh, length of the garden uh, and the makeup, and I would suggest that the original structure had been quite well built. It wasn't just a shed that was shoved at the bottom of the garden that was massive. Um, overall, I think, on balance, it's probably uh, acceptable. Um, with regards to the working in there, I think we have to realise now under the MPPF um, we are being encouraged to work from home and that facility is, is required. Uh, I agree that it is a small scale business, um, but as officers have already confirmed to the applicant, that small scale did not need uh, the permission. So um, on balance, I think um, as um, fellow councillors have said, uh, it, it's probably approvable. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Morgan, would you do you wish to put a motion forward to change those hours? Well, uh, going back to I think what the officer was saying, under item 7, it mentions about the other hours, 8.30 to 8pm, no amplified music in hours of operation. So was that suggested at the last meeting? Did he say on Saturdays, 9 till 5? That's under condition 7. Uh, good point. Let me just check. I may, I may be looking at the wrong condition. Hang on a second. Uh, I've got to go back to last month's agenda. Um. Oh, no. It's the, uh, I played music. Oh, no, no. It was, it was the same. Yeah. So no clients shall be permitted between 8.30 and 8 p.m. Uh, and nine and five, uh, so it was it, it it was the same. There were two separate conditions: one for clients attending and one for amplified music. But they did 
previously have the same uh, same amount of time. Um, obviously, if we if you if we if, if the application is approved uh, and condition uh, five uh, is either as suggested or is amended, we might want to look at amending uh, condition seven because otherwise seven. it suggests you can have amplified music even though nobody's in there. So that would be a strange one. So apologies for that. Can I just say a few words? Councillor. Yeah, so I too went on a site visit, which was interesting. I'm just going to take a slightly different tack from that, those that people have said so far. Um, I don't really see an issue at all with this small business. Um, you know, I don't see any problem at all. Got a, a, a probably a quiet couple living there. They could be very noisy people with a huge family, with people coming and going just as guests. So I really don't see that a few quiet people going for Pilates lessons in an enclosed shed at the bottom of the garden. I really don't see that as an issue at all. But I do see the enlarged size of the shed having an impact on both neighbours. Whichever way you look at it, it's going to stick up above the height of the fence. So it is going to make it darker. It is going to impinge on both neighbours. So I find it a very evenly balanced one. Yes, I'd like to support a small business like that. I think that's all very credible. But if I was the neighbour either side, then it would impact on me. So I will leave that to other people to decide. And that, that's the angle. I'm finding it quite difficult to decide because of that, because of the size of the building. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moore, go back again. Are you content to leave the hours as they are, or would you like to put a motion forward to amend them? Well, I'd still like to suggest more hours on, on Monday to um, Friday and, and a few hours on Saturday morning. Yeah. But I think the planning officer said you, the hours of um, amplified music was not connected with the operation, then, was it? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's just purely an oversight on our part. Uh, I think what the suggestion would be that if uh, whatever the uh, hours of operation in terms of clients, we would suggest that we uh, mirror that with the amplified music. Councillor McIver. Perhaps a, a piece still on the hours could be that we just keep the original hours but take off Sunday. Would that be a possible... I don't know if members would be happy with that. So this is the original right, from so page yeah, 55. So it's, the, it's the ones in the no amplified music condition. Right, if I could just say, yes, I, I agree. If you've got a small business, it, we will be getting people before and after work. I would say the parking's an issue, but I'd say a, a number of clients may just live in the village and walk there, to be honest. So I'm not sure how much you should mm. consider what the car parking situation is in that road because I think for a small business like that a number of keep fit people might want to cycle or walk there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the applicant has his hand up. Would you like to just ask your question? Okay. I just have a, an answer to your question. We don't play amplified music so that doesn't really matter to us. Um, the hours of operation, we would be actually really grateful if it could be eight till six o'clock in the evening, and then Saturday mornings only would be fine for us. Okay, Just to okay say. thank you. Yeah. Councillor <laughs> Morgan. Okay, said so Chairman. Um, can we agree to um, the hours on Monday to Friday from uh, extra hour in the um, at uh, in finishing time of eighteen hundred hours? And Saturday mornings from uh, until 12 o'clock. 9 till 12. Right. Okay. Um, Adrian, do you want to reflect that back? Um, yeah, well, I've got the conditions down uh, or proposed condition is Monday to Friday 8 to 6 uh, p.m. and Saturday mornings up to 12 noon. I presume starting at 8 o'clock on Saturday? Yeah. Nine. Nine, okay. 
Okay, so we're, we're saying Monday to Friday, 8 to 6, Saturday, 9 to noon. That's what, that's what you're saying, basically. So would you like, anybody like to second Councillor Morgan? Councillor McIver? Okay, those in favour of this motion, please record it. You know, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else have any comments, please? As Councillor Bradford. Obviously, do we need to vote to change and regularise the, um, condition number seven to the same hours? Or the oversight? Um, technically, that was an oversight for, uh, for us, so we could put that recommendation forward to members. Um, obviously, we could change that to no amplified music, if that would please members, being that the applicants have themselves said that they don't have amplified music, but... Yeah, we can just change that to match the hours. Um, if you just match the hours and, yeah, okay, that, that can be changed, no problem. Okay, so except that, it's going to be changed to match the hours of the, uh, of the work, even though they don't play music. Okay, any other comments? Okay, I'd just like to add one, that if this was brought under permitted development, they wouldn't need planning permission, which it could be if it was... Uh, meter and a half, meter lower. But there you go. Little point. Okay, so now we reach the point of voting on this one, I think. So, do we agree with the officer's recommendation of granting the application? Vote now, please. With the members. Ten, Jim. One I'm abstention? I'm an abstention. One oh, sorry. Abstention. Any against? No, no. That's it. Thank you. Right, that concludes the applications. We have the exclusion of public press. No need for that. So I declare the meeting closed at um, 8.18. Thank you. <laughs>